I am the generation that's, I'm not the manufacturing generation, I'm the one after that. All of those who were involved in the manufacturing are all long gone. Mm-hmm. And so was the business. It would have ceased in about 1970. Mm-hmm. It would have started something about 1830. And, and, and it was in different forms in different places in Fermanagh and uh, along the border. Um, so I would, I would have been aware of what was going on from about 60 on, from 1960 to 70. Before that, no, I don't really know much about it. <laughs> But there has been a number of people who has gathered information, particularly from my father, mm-hmm. who only died 10 years ago. And he was very alert right to the very end, and he was involved in it all, all the way through. And they would have spoken to him um, over the years, and came along and spoke to him at home, and recorded whatever he said, and looked yeah. at whatever photographs or whatever examples he had. And they all made up, kept the stories that are far more relevant. Mm-hmm. and more, more detail in them that I can ever give. The best I can do is give you a copy of some of the stuff that they produce. That's brilliant. And I can't really, I yes. wouldn't even remember the half of what's in them. Yes. Because I've read them, but don't ask me good dates. That's what I have brought with me, is this this one here, this book. And that was done in, in the late noughties. I think it was produced around about 2010. And this man, Johnny McKegney, who came from Temple, went around lots and lots of different areas. I've already given the ASBN number of this book to it. It covers most of the stuff that you guys are actually collecting. It's all in there somewhere. In the old age. In the old in age. An illustrated Irish folklore. And it's all pretty much around this part of Fermanagh. And it can be bought. I don't know whether you can get it now anymore or not, but it was. That's the, the ASBN number okay. which I've already given to Okay, Heather. Heather okay. At the time when he produced it, he died very shortly after he completed this, but he, what he did was he came along and spoke to people like my father and got from them their stories, and then he went off. He, he was a late-in-life artist, as in um, pencil drawing. Oh, wow. And he took his stories and he produced them. Wow. Now, they are all different. Th- Some of those are photographs that he... That's a photograph. I'll show you the original of it that this he would have seen. And he, he sketched it. And he's drawn um, photographs of... John Patrick and Her- Heber. Her- Herbie. Hebert. Hebert. Hebert McMahon's baby. He'd have raised the roof if you'd have called him Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what is that? Tony, Tony... Tonity Bog. Tonity Bog. Yeah. And Shannock. And Shannock. That was the townlands where that they were located. That was the townlands. Initially. Yeah. Bought the James of Spade and Shovel Manufacturer. The whole story is there. So, <laughs> so is this your great... This uh, is Heber your, is my father. Is your father and John then, Patrick would be my uncle. John Patrick. So did he was did he he owned? They owned it. They were working it. it. They were. They owned it. They would have been working owners of it. They, both of them, the father would have done the what they call the plating of the spades. John Patrick would have done the finishing of them. Uh-huh. Plating was where they took it. A small piece of steel, a bit bigger than that, and beat it out to the, with a big hammer, thumping it, thumping it, and it was heated and thumped it, and you could hear the hammer three mile away. Right. So not only one of my father when he when he got to ninety four he was somewhat deaf. Deaf. Deaf as told. Well he was only deaf for the suit of him, to be honest. <laughs> so, like, so so was this so was this like so then did that come as that grand the great grandfather owned it or was that just Oh that would it would have went back three or four generations three before. Three or four then. generations before that. Yeah. And I see the different types of spades so was it a big was it a big was it a factory obviously oh, no, was it a big factory, big factory. Yeah, yeah, big yeah, factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously employed Lots of people. There were and quite a few people in it. And I don't know what the numbers were exactly, but you're, you'd you have been talking about 15 or 20. Now, 15 or 20, that time was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot, particularly yeah. Particularly in Absolutely. this part of the country. Uh-huh. Most people were in England to get a job. Yeah, and I see there's different types of spades. Absolutely, there were something like 25 or 30. Different types. And, and they were almost by county. Some of them were by towns. Some counties would right? have had two or three of them. You see, because you know, automatically think if somebody said to you a spade, it's a flat spade, wouldn't you? A flat mm. spade with a handle, yeah. sure, it's not going to be, that's going to be it. But obviously, there was different spades to do different yeah. things. They were designed for to suit the type of soil that existed. And that differs from one part of the county to another. Some and obviously from and damp, turf and, and bogs. Stone, stony, rocky, roots in them. All sorts of hard soils and all. They're, they're, they're. Now, was there an awful lot of difference between them? I'd say, in, if you're in that business in this day and age, 
over then 25, you probably put, cut it back to the five. Mm. It just would have done away with mm. the five. Some bunch of them, them together. Bunch them together. That's yeah. the middle of all of those five, yeah. and that's what you're going to get. You don't have this wonderful choice. But that was the way they did things at them. <laughs> so generations of mm. manufacturing. The, the story of... Wow. Now, that's the drawing version of it. This here is, is another... Uh, it's, this is more of the story and, and just a few photographs in it. And it was a cousin of mine, Gabriel Maguire, who was in... This, this was to do with the opening of the school or the change of the school mm-hmm. over in, in Adam City, which is the far side of Manor. Mm-hmm. She was a teacher in Corny Gig and, and eventually it closed and got amalgamated with another and then they told the story of different people that were in it. In the school, and yeah. She, they produced this. But then she told the story, most of what's in that, but it's more of a story, dates, and it's a bit easier to read. Sometimes that can be a bit... Oh, so the two are very good. They're very similar and at a very similar time. Now, when that was being done um, by uh, Mr. McEgney, he, Gabriel was often with him, with my father. Uh-huh. And he lived with me at the time. Uh-huh. So uh, they tell me they're coming. And, oh, the whole day. But anyway, that's terrible. I didn't really get into the middle of it. I had other things to be doing. I'd go to work and things like that. So those, again, a lot of the photographs that I would have, the originals of, are actually in this. Yeah. Um, and they're probably a bit better. You know, for example, that, that there is the photograph that that's drawn. Yes, that's a bit better. better and it's a bit easier that. to yes, see. Yes, it is, yes. And, and stuff like that. So... Anything and the stories there. The stories are there, and they are there more than um, they tell the whole story complete with dates and all sorts of stuff like that. So the, That's fabulous. The, the why did it? Why did it close in the end? Well, obviously the well, stories don't tell. In, in 1970, um, you, I don't know if you were, <laughs> were you about time at all or not? I was born in but, 62. Right. Well, JCB <laughs> started to come around. Who? JCBs. You know the track. The, the Digger. JCBs, yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. Now, who's going to Who's going to wield a spade whenever you have a JCB to do the digging? <laughs> That's the main part. Of it. That was the main part of it. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it, it was something that became obsolete of, of, of requirement. Later years, it became something because um, the quality of what was available in years later on became so poor mm-hmm. that um, there was a lot of Questions asked about would it be practical or possible or even worth considering remanufacture or spades again? Um, and I know that in or about 2000 and in or about the 2000s, early part of it, I had said to my father, Would you, be, do you think of doing it again? And I know it's not a Well, the, the fingers as well burnt at that okay, stage. Okay, okay. And don't forget now, he was well in his 80s at that stage oh I don't but I wasn't expecting him to go out and start hammering them now that was not well exactly no. could, it, could they not have diversified and done something a little different the, the, there was a little bit of that went on um, in terms of things like we went into other implements that were of an agricultural mm. nature now agricultural tools are not really very profitable at the best of times you're mm. not going to get paid for them at all I know, I know. <laughs> in I know. most cases I know but um, diversification probably would have gone a totally different direction and the work they had a huge setup that was well put together for what they were doing but it wasn't really suitable to do anything else to do anything else but, like you, you know they were you could would you class them as engineering they were of a sort but there weren't engineers that did loads of welding. They couldn't have started making link box or something like that. It was more of a blacksmith type thing, would it? Uh, a bit like that. A bit yeah. like that. Yeah. A bit, yeah. bit like that. And um, in in the seventies, you know, lots of things had um, people's ways of doing things would change dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. F- from the fifties to the seventies, life changed dramatically. Yes. Um, and the spade became something who would want it. Yeah. I know one of the things my father used to say is whenever he comes to meet Peter at the wonderful gates that you get to, he can't possibly get in because he, he as he says himself, he was the cause of the death of many a person <laughs> through work. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Not anything else. Not anything else. 
I don't know whether he, he met him at all or not. I don't know any of that. Nobody ever knows for sure that sort of type of story. But anyway, that was one of the things he used to say. And Tonnet, right, okay, bear with me. Yeah. But Shannock and Tonnet Bog. So we're. So They're two town lands. Two it? town and lands. I, I was hope. Have you the Wi Fi here? No, see me, the, the whole place has no Wi Fi at the minute. All right. Anyway, the right. whole the well, whole was, building is no Wi Fi. What I was Wi-Fi. hoping to do to be able to show you if we could have gone on to the Wi Fi was to see a map and see the townlands. Tanity and Shannock uh, was where they originally lived and was a small, more, a small, I suppose, black, blacksmith's forge that developed into the first spade mill, making mill. Okay. And it had a water wheel on it. Right. And it was, um, now the water wheel was dependent upon the water coming uh-huh. to turn the wheel, to turn the mm-hmm. machines. There was a lot of problems with that, in that, first of all, it was uh, uncertain when the water would be there. Obviously, when it rained plenty, there was loads of... Lots of rain here? Yeah. yeah. But it's ha- you have to capture it to keep it for oh. when you don't get it. Um, and that was a problem. And that is the main reason why they moved. Mm-hmm. There were, on, along that river, there were quite a few people had wheels for all sorts of things, be it, as, as in their case, for the milling or the... The hammering, that's yeah. what it was mainly for. Um, others were using it for milling grains and all sorts of other things. But they were all using like really a small, nothing, not like a river like that. Yeah. It's a small stream. And uh, they all ran out of water together, probably one plane the other for using all of that. You could imagine the You can imagine, canal, yes, you can. Yes. Because it was only over a very small number of miles. And the reason that they moved from there to Lackey, but they kept the name Shannock because that was the brand name they came. Even though they, they came from a townland called Shannock Green to a townland called Lackey, which they still kept the brand name as Shannock, even though it was, it was two miles down the road. And if we have, so we can bring up the maps anyway, because that's what Heather does, she's GIS, so she can bring up the maps. Mm-hmm. So we could maybe put a wee snapshot of the map in there. There's, there's a couple, there, the, the first place would be at Shannock, Tanady Bog. That's where the house was and where the middle, the first mill. So that's where you want your um, pinpoint to be, your that's XY the coordinates original, to be. The original one. Well, L- Lackey would have been where it would have. They moved to it in something like 1930. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that, it was all up. The other. So it depends on which end of the story you're in. Uh, has mm. time moved on? It moved on as well. Uh-huh. Now we, we, you're talking about the Fermanagh spades and all of that. And at the end of the day, 99 percent of them were manufactured in Monaghan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and still to this day, and my father was, he was born in Fermanagh, and he never thought of it as anything else. And even I wouldn't, and I never, I was never born in Fermanagh. I was born in Fermanagh, and then still it's, it's a Fermanagh story. And I know that for 40 odd years of its existence, they were manufactured. Now, when I say they were born, manufactured in Fermanagh, across the river is the difference. Yes. And I don't know if, if Helen had showed you the video. No, she has it. Uh, that one was was done in about sixty four by um, uh, who did a number of and again a number of the different trades and crafts that went on in the country. He, he copied them. Uh, I was going to say Bob Monkhouse, but it's not. not Bob Monkhouse. No, no, <laughs> that's an old it's, one. It's not. No, this is this is even older. Um, I'll, I'll think of it. I'll think of it in a minute. <laughs> um, and he came to the mill and he made a, a, a video back in about 64. It was an, a UTV program mm. that went on after the news and he would have come along and spent pretty much the whole day there. But one of the opening features on the movie is, and it's, it's there available, it showed him standing on one of the bridges. And as he said, my left foot's in Fermanagh and my right foot's in Monaghan. So it was, and that's how. The, the, the river was the one that was driving the wheel mm-hmm. and it drove mm-hmm. it drove either one way or the other but it was the wheel yeah. still the river um, now obviously that presented itself with a whole lot of difficulties in, year, in years later on um, where there was all sorts of issues with first of all roads being closed because mm-hmm. it was completely cut off right. and they had to actually make a bit of a road to be able to get to the factory Believe it or not, because right. it was physically cut off, it was physically cut off. Yeah, overnight. And um, I think that happened. I was very, very small. I remember. I, I don't honestly know was was what I remember. 
the making the road or fixing the road. Mm. But there was a crowd of guys there and we're all fixing or, or working at it. And I think, again, if I had the map, you'd be able to see where the road was closed on a triangular basis. And there's this wee straight line cut across the bottom of it, and that stayed within Monaghan. So that they were able to get from there to there and eventually get down to the mill. Because everywhere else was shut off. Everywhere else was shut off. And there's, a, you, there's another one, a house on further down the road. And he had to make a lane from his way, way around lakes and the devil and all. He had to make about nearly three miles to be able to get back out. And he was in the north, but he had to do that well, to that get happen- to another north road. Well, that happens even now, doesn't it, really? The, the, no, it's not like that anymore. It's not as bad. Ah, ah, no, but you hear it on TV all the time about roads are waterlogged and flooded and they're going around the country to get to such oh, and such. Well, these were spikes. Right. Oh, these were uh, railway lines stuck into the ground that would have, the gap would have been, uh, you might get a bicycle through it. You certainly couldn't get a vehicle. Mm-hmm. Absolutely no way. And that was it. Now, that's why at the end of the year, that part of the country would have sort of almost died on its feet. Because mm-hmm. it was, where could you go? Uh, there's no, no transport system no, 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 or return, no, no, nothing like that years ago, yeah. No, it was a different thing. A different area in town. So that's why we were not that keen on ever coming back again. <laughs> the thought of customs of any kid, oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> I used to go with my father when he would wait in the van with the deliveries and um, come down here to the Lexi Vinniskin and listen to ski and run about all these other times. And he'd load up the van and then come out through the customs. Um, Thomas into Newton Butler and we went in through the two sets and we could loss it maybe an hour or two at it yeah. and anyway, on down and go to the different shops that he went to here and there and may or may, or may not have emptied the van mm. so there might be a dozen or two left on it and what he had to try to do is he went back over into the back of the mill into the building that was still in the north mm. and put them back in there and then right back out again and away back on right round to come out through the customs before six o'clock before the close, because otherwise you couldn't take the van home. You'd have to walk it. Oh my goodness! That's a fact. That was a carry-on you used to go. You were wouldn't by that again, sure yeah. you wouldn't. No, oh, Jesus, no way. <laughs> <laughs> After the freedom of the way we go now. Oh no, no, no way. You go wherever you like. Exactly. But we want that again. That, that was the way it was. Uh, and oftentimes, whenever you'd find that you would be doing that, there'd be a customs man sitting up on the bridge looking down. What should we be doing? And then explain what you're doing, sir. Sure he sees him all the time. Eh? I'm sure he probably sees him all the time. No, well, uh, 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 my grandfather years ago came to a funeral in a skillin one time. And there was nothing to do it in the middle. Uh, they came down to a funeral and they got delayed going home. So they thought, the customs just closed. Ach, we'll skate on in there. Because ah. we only lived a mile around the road. Uh-huh. Parked the car in front of the house. We just don't own private grounds. And uh, I'll, I'll slip out in the morning and come back in here. You know, stamp the book. Because you had stamped the book. You stamped the book. The book had to be That was what it was all about. But you're happy to know. Oh, I do with you. That's what I mean. He says, so he, he did that. He come in home, done it. The way off in the morning, the way back around. He landed back to the custom. He says, I got held up. <laughs> Where did you get held up? I was a few That's strange. I thought I saw you at your house last night. He says, you can leave the car and walk home. Oh. <laughs> I took the car up. They held the car? Uh-huh. £25 he had to pay for it in 1955. No way. To get the car back, which would have been a lot of money. A lot of money in them days. A lot of money. And so my grandfather was not the sort of, he wasn't, he wasn't into that crack. He wasn't on a... No, no, no. I, so he had the stamp come back and forward? Yeah. And if you did, so how did they know that he had went over? Because the books we showed the stamp coming out. And they hadn't seen the stamp come. No out. stamp come back. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it mad? Oh. So anyway, that was the crazy stuff that went on. But um, it, 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 that's, that was the sort of life it was. These are just some photographs. What I have in this is some of them are just the original photographs that you have in that. Yeah. There was a number of things put together here with, in gathering information similar to the exercise you did. And there's one from a fellow by the name of Alan Crozier, who I thought was from Queens in my head before I, um, once this came up. Mm-hmm. But in fact, it, he was also the Folk Museum in Oma. Oh, yes. Which I didn't realise. But I knew there was a letter from him, but I didn't really, I wasn't involved in it. I just knew it was existing. And that was in 1981. He did 
something or other gathering information. And it was about Lipton at the time, mostly that, that was about, but the whole mill stuff would have come into it as well. And then there was another guy here, and an Alan McCutcheon, and he was in the Mat- Matier building in 1 May Street, Belfast 1. Now, I don't know if there's still a Matier building anymore. Okay. Maybe he was a Queen's person, I don't know. Don't know. And he was looking, he was in 1965 taking photographs all around the place. So again, what he did with them, I don't know. This is him just sent a letter back and thanks very much for the photographs. And he'd he come back, I suppose, whether he ever Whether he did or and, not. Well, I don't know, to be honest. He was hoping to have it done by the end of October, what he was doing. But if he did, I don't know anything about it. Uh, room 33, Matty or M A T I E R S building. One okay. May. Is there a May Street film? I'm sure there is. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, Belfast won. There's no, there's no post to post that then. Yeah. So, they're, what they did or what what they recorded at the time, I don't know. And I'm sure there's been lots of different pieces of research done over the years. Pro- probably so. There probably has, because it's obviously a rich stream of research about... It was, it was easier done when they had the people who were directly involved yeah, in it. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to the life of me, I'm a watered-down version of it all. Well, the fa- my father was would have kept a lot of stuff and had it about the house. And, and it's still there. Anything that we found was about his papers and stuff like that. We would have put them in. You'd keep kept them? Just just put them into a folder. Like, yeah. Look, there's nothing. I have no story. Some of them I make know something about. Some of them I know nothing about, really. Um, there was one in there of a photograph of... It, it, it turned out to be my father and my brother and uh, I wasn't sure I thought it was me that one. I thought that was me Is it... <laughs> and who's this? it's my brother the younger brother that's your brother that's yeah. your dad that's my father so it says it's Haber but I always believed it wasn't Haber but I, I saw another photograph uh-huh. of me standing beside that van and I was up you see the line that's in the middle of the van in the shape of it yes well I was above that the height of me so that wasn't me I had to be the younger brother four years younger than me Look at, the, look at the wee shorts and all. That's right. Oh, well, I mean, I'm the same, but then further over. Uh, I'd, I'd be four over. years older than that. Somebody was in earlier on talking about spades, about flat spades and um, what's the other one? Turf. Uh, well, there'd be turf spades and turf spades and, and, and uh, shovels and, of course, which my wife keeps saying um, about the spade. And it's, it's actually a shovel she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's an alley. <laughs> Jeez, you're never there. Forty years later, still don't want a different fucking spade in the show, but Christ of a lady, where is the water coming? And what's an a navi? A navi would be a square one. It would be used for um, snow. All right. Or okay. grain, something's late. All right. If you lifted a shovel full of clay on a navi, you probably wouldn't fit a lift. It's too heavy. Right, too much okay. All right. You need a, a, a smaller shovel is the buy with the point on it. Like a, like a heart shape. See, you do know. Oh, no, no, no one knows. <laughs> See, you might need the 25 after all. The, which, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 sorry. The 25 were spades. 25 were spades. And a spade is the play with the long, narrow... The long, narrow metal one. piece with a sharp edge on the end of it, and you could put your foot on either the top. So there was 25 different, different types at that yeah, time yeah. of spade. spade. Not, that's not nothing talking to about, do with the no, other one Nothing to do with shovels, nothing to do with do anything shovels. else at all. And lies were... They were a scoopy sort of a thing that... There seems to be a bit of a comeback for them in Donegal. I don't know where it came out of. I've seen them on the TV doing it. And it's actually girls were, were digging. Push, you sort of stuck it into the ground and pushed it along and it threw the thing up. A bit like the way a plough would do it. Hmm. But I would imagine it must be damned hard work to do that. The ground would have to be very soft, first of all. I would it? say so, yeah. I mean, it, 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 was, it was the shape of a scoop. Like the sort of thing you'd use for pulling out sweets out of it. And you're going to like you, you it in the ground. And it, it turned it over. Well, you know, uh, I had a son of mine has uh, made con- connection with a guy who buys or goes around auctions and devil and all the stuff like that for farms and all oh, whatever. Uh, but he had told him that he'd be in, he's looking for a good spade because we don't have any. I don't have one. I have one, but I broke it when I was. We fell and I've come the worst of that, but I will. Um, anyway, he he come he, he told me the other day he's got a, a practically brand new turf spit from somebody in Tyrone. I'm after paying £160 for it. 
160 pound for a spade. For a turf spade that was made in there. Oh. Well, at least you have something that was oh, made there. I see. Oh, the stamp and all is on it. Oh, the, the original stamp is on it, and he, it has only came about in the last week or so. Oh, yeah. wow! But that'll end up in the fireplace, in the on the fireplace, in the tablet. Oh, yes, on the fireplace oh, on the wall, fireplace. Not, not in the, the fireplace. No, 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 no. 160 pound. That, that's. Um, that's nice to have, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So. Um, It'll not be used. There'll be no turf cutting no, with it. No, there'll be no turf no, cutting. No. no. 